Hello. A little while ago I was working on a mini disc recorder with an optical output and it was failing and I was wondering if I could add an SPDIF uh, electrical output for connecting to a digital audio recorder. But uh, one of my subscribers suggested that I look at the Web Mini Disc Pro project and that allows you to connect a um, NetMD recorder like this one which I bought many years ago uh, directly to computer via USB and extract the uh, data digitally from the disk. Uh, that would be uh, ideal but this I've had a lot of use out of this and the mechanism is very noisy it's past its best so I'm not too sure if I want to trust this I could really use a better net MD recorder but they're hard Special to delivery. get. Ooh, I say this could be useful. Okay here is my little net MD unit the mains cable uh, has disintegrated or I should say the mains adapter cable so the mains adapter it comes with here uh, as you can see the I've had to do some repair work at both ends it's made of the same material really as these headphones and you can see that the flex is kind of just starting to disintegrate and it really fell apart on on this power cable so I've had to patch it up so that's not an ideal solution for power. Another way around could be to use its battery compartment. This takes a uh, three volt or one and a half volt. A one and a half volt cell must be a DC DC converter in there. So you could provide an external one and a half volt supply to that if you completely lose this three volt adapter. But it is presently working and I can connect it to the computer and use Web Mini Disk Pro and I will show you that uh, software shortly. So that's connected to the computer and we can extract the audio using that connection. But it would be useful, very useful, to have a spare mini disc player. So a subscriber has kindly sent me this. Let's investigate what's in here. MZN505, whereas my existing one is MZN910. What the difference is, we do not know, but they both do long play and net MD. We have some discs to play with, that's always handy. Oh, that one's new. Uh, the power supply is a little bit chunkier than the, uh, the one I've got, and the cable seems to be much better quality, so that's progress. That looks like it would be compatible with mo both this and my mini disc player. A mini USB cable. <laughs> That's useful. I spent ages trying to find this one earlier. <laughs> uh, we have optical out, so we can demonstrate that. Put a bright light in there, and you can see. So that plugs in the 3.5mm headphone socket but also gives you optical out. Remote control is a slightly simpler remote control to the one I have on mine. Mine's got display and various features. And the machine itself. This originally had one of the chewing gum type stick batteries in there which has long since died. Does this one take an AA directly? Oh yeah, that's much better, much better solution. So if you have power supply problems, you can just put a double A in there and off you go. That's a, you know, it's bulkier, but a better idea. So that's running just on its battery for the moment and it's playing and it sounds much quieter and happier than the mechanism in mine. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can connect this up to uh, the Web Mini Disc Pro and demonstrate that feature. If you go over to the Web Mini Disc uh, project using the suitable browser, uh, I'm using Chrome. Then the next thing you'll need to do is install the uh, Zadig USB driver. Uh, I did have to fight with a certain amount of pop ups and nonsense to get here, but once you've got that installed, uh, as we have there. Uh, we could reinstall driver or do things but we have installed that and that's working and it sees our net MD Walkman which is brilliant so now we can connect with web mini disc pro so this is presently connected to my uh, existing mini disc recorder and it sees it there connect and it will read 
the table of contents of the disk. Go to options here, enable homebrew ripping mode. It does warn you, advanced feature, uh, it, homebrew modes notice still applies, which I think means what they're getting at is it's not guaranteed to work basically. So they're still working on the A track decoding, but it does mean that we can, well, you can select play and if you've got headphones connected, it'll play out the headphones. You can hear, I don't know if you heard the mechanism rattle then, but that's record. Okay, so that's playing, but we don't want to do that. We would typically want to extract the audio digitally. So when we've got the enable, homebrew ripping enabled, instead of record here, we should now have download. And we can download the tracks and convert. But it does warn us, uh, keep in mind this functionality is not stable. But okay, download and convert. So that'll convert them to WAV files for us. So we wait a few seconds. It's much quicker than playing the audio out at normal speed. As you can see, it's doing a quarter of the song every about 10 seconds. So it downloaded about seven minutes worth of music in about two minutes. Uh, and if we look now at the downloads, we'll have some WAV files. Which we can play. But we don't want to hit content matches. So that's all working, albeit, let's say, the power cable's falling apart and the mechanism is extremely noisy. I think it's the sled on the laser. Let's try our latest acquisition and see if that works too. We'll try it with its own mains adapter since mine is disintegrating. So the much chunkier mains adapter on this other model. I suspect this is an older model, but um, better quality, I would say, that transformer. I can see why they wanted to move to something smaller and lighter, but uh, the cable was terrible on that. Okay, so let's uh, connect that. Why is it not saying connecting? Connection failed. I think maybe we need to go back to the uh, USB driver and get it to see this different model. Oh, I see. Install driver. Uh. Right. I have to install the driver again for this model. OK. Right. Now, can we try again? No, aha! There we go. So just having that driver in is not enough. You need to install it for each machine. And it does allow you to edit the names. So I will edit them so that it knows the difference between this 510 and the 910. It's a right protested disk. So let's just fix that. Don't know why that matters. OK, it's only warning us if we want to make changes. Uh, this is an LP4 recording. I've not tried that before. So we can say record from MD, but we don't just want to record. We want to enable the homebrew ripping. And now we can click on that and download and convert. That was super quick. OK, I can't stand Elvis, but let's just see if it plays. Well, since my baby left yes, unfortunately it does. Right, so <laughs> I don't want to hear any more of that. 
So that's working really well. Now let me tell you about some of the advantages and disadvantages of using this compared to uh, digital audio extraction via a digital audio recorder. So using a digital audio connection out from a larger mini disc player uh, using the optical or if it had an SPDIF digital audio output straight into something like my Tascam uh, digital audio recorder. Well, that could be a little bit simpler, I suppose. It's more direct. You don't have to muck about with all the software. The, the big disadvantage with that is though the mini disc playout will send out track breaks to say this is the end of one track and I'm starting another track. Unfortunately, the Tascam completely ignores them. Now, I know that they are sent out on the optical link because what I used to do was record onto a CD recorder, a Philips CD recorder, that would allow you to copy from Minidisc onto CD, and I'd use CD rewritables, special ones, actually. It wouldn't take normal ones. Uh, and that would put the track breaks in didn't send over the CD text or the, the text from Minidisc onto CD text for reasons I don't know why maybe the data is just not there but the uh, track breaks were put in the track names were not this gives us track breaks and track names but there is some warning about whether the A track uh, which is like their version of MP3 if you like it's their encoding process is 100% uh, secure and safe whereas we know the other route completely works so possibly the other route might be better in terms of sound quality don't know I suspect they're going to be identical really uh, but certainly in terms of track splits this is much better so I can see this being very useful and I'm now that I have a, a backup machine as well I'm going to use this route for all mini disc ripping in future. The worst way of doing it would be to use the analog outputs of any mini disc player and then capture that with a digital audio recorder because of course you're going from digital to analog and back into digital and that's lossy so you don't want to do that and of course you will also definitely not get track splits and definitely not get your track names and you can also have level shifts uh, so that's you know, you're not going to guarantee the zero approach, you're not at zero dB level, you're not going to get a pure digital transfer that way. So I really wouldn't recommend that route. Uh, this seems to be very much the way to go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what we've done here with these mini disc recorders and software. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. I'm intrigued you know this 910 model this later possibly more expensive model than one I have uh, has this remote control with a display and I just can't help but wonder what would happen if I was to plug this remote control into this slump, slightly older uh, maybe slightly lower spec one uh, it says PCMD on there actually let's unplug that do we get the track titles for example yes we do So, the higher end uh, remote control with a display and all those lovely functions is compatible with the uh, slightly older or lower spec models. It might be that was intentional that uh, allowed people to upgrade to a later remote control or better remote control if they wanted to later. But really uh, a good advantage of this one is that it runs on a double A rather than that unobtainable very slim battery in this one. So um, that works a treat. I'm really delighted with that.